Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Today is the man child. All right, so today for review, I'm going to go over my Master Universe, Masterverse, Revolution, Sorceress Teal figure. It's part of the Wave 11 series. So I got this series almost a month ago already. I reviewed most of the figures. She was the only one I didn't. I was going to keep her in card, but yeah, I'm going to take her out and review her finally. And I got a couple requests in the comments. Will I review her? So that's what I'm doing. Here she is. Um, I thought it was neat that the Revela Revelation cartoon finally took Teal and made her become a sorceress. Going back to some of the, that was original heritage, going back to some of the Motu um, cartoons and stories from the Motu lore. Um, sorry, Daph, you're not familiar. The Wave 11 series um, changed up the packaging, so now you can see smaller window. But it's still a big enough window to see the figure. And they got some unique, a really cool art on the left-hand side going in and a Masterverse logo up top. And now here's a quick look at the images on the back of the box. So I just basically have the Sorceress figure standing here. Some other images of her poses and the, um, once again, the Sorceress staff. And then you have some unique art of Castle Grayskull, Attorney, and a full moon behind her. And here's a quick look at a bio. You want to pause and read that. And here's a look at all four figures that was part of Wave 11 series. And here's some more beautiful art of the Sorceress Teela on the right-hand side of the box looking in from the window. Okay, so I got Sorcerer's Teal Ladder Box or accessories, which really don't come with much. But um, let's take a look at the head sculpt and articulation. Yeah, really pretty uh, face and overall head sculpt and paint. Uh, it's basically just, I want to say, the Teal 2.0 face with the um, regular headdress and hair. I think. I'll bring it on compare. It looks close anyway. Maybe some subtle differences. But uh, yeah, well done. Right? Beautiful eyes, the eyebrows. And you can see this eagle piece. It's... Sort of, okay, it's all glued on on my figure. It is an independent piece or separate sculpt, I want to say. But it's, um, is the hair? Okay, yeah, so so is the hair, but everything's glued together for the most part. As far as your articulation, now really tight with this finger. Left to right, can, yeah, barely, can barely move that far. Maybe that, she can look that um, far down and back. It's hindered by the hair. But aside that, so you can see it a little chrome piece painted with the uh, eagle air. You got the red. Eyes painted. They're, I want to say they're, are they sculpts? Hmm. It feels like they're just painted onto the mask itself. And as I said, this glued on, pretty soft. So here's a look at the hair. Good sculpting, you know, paint, but it's a solid piece too. I mean, you can barely move it. And once again, you can see going back how it just, um, yeah, it hinders everything as far as movement. So here's a closer look, right? Just all the sculpting, the overall paint. So it's a, a light, like a brown color, reddish brown, but it has like a, a little bit of a wash in it. And here's the look from the other side. And my, my figure, too, has a wide gap in the neck piece here. And I even, I try to get the head off the ball joint. I'm not, you know, I was going to maybe change out a regular teal head. Might not really do much with this figure. It's kind of her own thing. So moving down to her chest and armored. Um, so you can see the shoulder armor pieces are, you know, really stiff. They don't move much. It's just a couple different things going on here. So you have the main armored over this just painted piece, which is supposed to represent... Some of her other garments and, I guess, a lighter armor going down to this dress. But that's all painted, even up to the neck. It's, it's um, sculpted, but yet painted. It's not a separate piece. But this armor is like a separate piece. But again, it's all it's all glued on to my figure. She has this red jewel piece in here. That's also a separate sculpt. It's painted red. Doesn't, doesn't look like it comes off. Yeah, it's just like an outer sculpt kind of thing. Um, but as far as the sort of articulation of the ab crunch, right? She can spin, go down about that far and back. You can see, too, where they painted over this whitish silver color. So it's all paint. That's not sculpt where the armored is. Um, so moving around for a minute to the back. So you can see this armor piece. I'm trying to pull her hair up there. Um, and the cape. Maybe we'll look over this cape in a second. But there's a couple pins or plugs back in here now. They look like they can pop out. But mine, for the most part, without modifying it, it's not really meant. It's not going to come apart easy. But that, it would look like to me... That this piece would flip over, and that's how you would take this cape off. And here's a little closer look on there at those um, pegs or pins. So once again, you could pull this back, but they're kind of glued in for the most part. And even if you did, you can probably remove this armor, but again, all over here it's glued. Now I try to pop my head off, and it's already cracking the neck piece apart. I'm just going to leave it. So mine already has an automatic QC issue. I'm just going to leave it. Um, side that, so there's a cape. Soft material, going back to something like Shearer's cape. Right, you got you see what a gold paint 
ridges in here, which I don't remember in the show if this was supposed to be a separate piece like the Sorcerer's had. Down here is the white part. Good fabric. And then you have some gold highlights down here, right? So the, um, there's the inside. It's just a plain, it's just a plain piece. Um... Which is cool because that's, I wish the Sorceress Cape would have had like some printed feathers. So it's basically a paint print kind of pattern. I like that. And that's pretty much the uh, cape. And you can see how it's, um yeah, it's pretty short. Or it goes down to the bottom of her, um, back of her legs for the most part. And then taking a look at the back. So you can see she has this belt piece sculpted around. Again, it's all part of the sculpt. We already took a look at all this stuff. You can see the upper part of the armor where that moves. Going down to this dress piece, just uh, I like this gold color. It's pretty cool. And it looks like there's so you got a couple different gold color shades going on here, right? You got this lighter gold, darker gold to, ma to match this piece up in the armor as well. This piece is pretty soft too. So spinning her back around, taking a look at the front and the arms again. So we know this piece for that armor, it's pretty hard. It's you know you can move a little bit, but for the most part it's not moving. She has some sculpted. It looks like feathers were trying to come through, and that, yeah, they are sculpted, painted in like a whitish color, a little different from the armored. As far as the arm articulation, so she can go all the way out, down, forward, back, has a bicep swivel, can bend all the way up at the face, has these um, kind of like bicep rings or guards on here. Now they're um, all part of sculpt, painted gold. Also has these forearm bracers, both that are all part of the um, sculpt, so they're not in the, you know, they're not separate, they don't come off. Has some gold rings in the front and the back painted in a blue. See the word of blues paint to match these boots. Mine already has some slop on here. Um, she comes with two semi-closed weapon gripping hands and they can spin and go, let's see. Okay. So they can go in and out on both sides. And then the left arms are all the same as far as a feather sculpt, articulation, the uh, bicep ring and the uh, forearm bracer. So moving down, we already took a look at the, this belt piece of sculpted on the waist. She has this gown robe set up here, right? Now we know the back it's gold piece, how flexible and soft it is. The front piece is an only individual piece that comes down. That can go about that far. I like the gold trim that's painted around it. All part of the sculpt. Now she can, so obviously it just covers the whole waist, but she can still spin inside it. So we have the ab, you know, we can spin at that and inside the waist. As far as the legs, so with this dress piece on, she can only go out about, okay, about that far. She can kick forward about that far, go back. Bend it that wow, well, she's stuck. Mine's look at the knees are stuck. Yeah, mine has all kinds of issues. How about this knee? Okay, at least that knee can bend about that far. I'll have to heat that one up. Um, has that thigh cut up in here, so you can spin at the thigh. Uh, has these okay, sorcerer's boots once again. Looks like the same ones sorcerer's had first release. You can spin at the boot, of course, the boot can come off if you want them to. And then, as far as the foot articulation, go up, down, and rock side to side. So, as far as accessories, a sorcerer's tail comes with a pair of called spell casting hands with origins type pegs that can go on the left and right side and both of these so the, hin and the hinges go in and out and then for a final accessory it just comes with the same exact eagle staff that the sorceress already has same color and everything and here's a quick overall look of sorceress tail all set up with her um, staff in hand and now here she is set up with her spell casting hands and i already took out the other ones and as i said they can spin they go in and out hinge joints and they just pop right out very easy. And moving on to a couple comparisons. So here's our new Sorceress Teela next to our first Revelation Sorceress. So you can see the staffs are yeah exactly the same. This one looks a little brighter on her first really Sorceress. Hers a little darker, but as far as the sculpt, identical from what I can see. And now here's a quick comparison once again with our Sorceress Teela against the 2.0 Revelation Teela. And here's a closer look at the two heads or faces side by side. So yeah, obviously you can see this is Teela. Um, they look very identical, but yeah, a little bit kind of different, you know, as far as sculpt. Of course, the hair and everything is different. She has a bird headdress. And the skin tones with both figures look very identical under my light. Some, like, she's a little bit shinier in her legs, where she's not. Could be a factory thing, but they look very identical. And now here's one more comparison with the Mattel Creations Godlin and our Sorceress Teela, because, of course, those two battle it out in the end of Revelation Season 2. All right, so it's pretty much my review on the new Master Universe Wave 11 Sorceress Teela. Um, you know, it's cool to finally see this figure in a line. If you like that scene, going back to the Revelation cartoon where Teela finally took the Sorceress's place and turned into a Sorceress Teela. Um, some neat armor. I like the paint, the different, just the robe. But you get the same boots, the same staff. Different pair of hands to change out like all the figures do. It would have been cool if she came with some casting spell effects like God Lynn did, but she didn't. Which you can use hers. 
But that's all you really get. And mine definitely has some QC issues up in the neck. It's ready to crack and break off. So I'm not even going to remove the head. I was going to try to change out that. Just teal the head with that one just for fun. But it's not even worth it. I don't know what you're really achieving aside. Teal his head. And this is what she, her final form is going to look like anyway with that bird mass. That's what this figure is all about. Um, I don't know if the other figures are going to be like that. It's probably just mine. Side that. It's cool. You're not getting much, but if you like that figure, I like what they did with her. So I appreciate everybody watching. Until next time, take care.